Okay, this is the lecture for section um, one of chapter nine for our new test five. This is going to be radical expressions and radical functions. You'll want to have your calculator out and when I return um, on Thursday I will show you how to do these um, in your calculator. I will try to talk you through it and tell you how to do it, but I will show you how to do it uh, when we get back together again on Thursday. Okay, so what we're doing is finding square roots, uh, knowing the difference between positive principal square roots, negative square roots, what is a radical, a radicand, these are all the vocabulary words that you need to know. The radical is this symbol here. What's under it, this would be called the radicand. What number goes here is called an index. Okay, so if I wanted to have a square root of something, um, for example, there is no index written because a square root is the most common root and it's understood to be a 2. We don't write that, it's understood to be that. Okay, if there is a number there, for example, a 3, that would make that a cube root of 3x, the index being 3, the radicand being 3x. So let's do a couple problems together. All right, these are pretty straightforward and easy ones because these are perfect roots. It says find the square root. Since it did not tell you to find the principal square root, which means the positive square root, what you need to do is indicate that it could be both plus or the minus 9. Because if you square positive 9, you get 81. But if you square negative 9, you also get 81. So since I didn't indicate which root I wanted and I didn't say use the principal root, you give me plus or minus 9. Here I'm telling you that I want the negative square root in problem number 2. So I don't want the plus or minus, I only want the minus. So that's negative um, square root of 225 and the square root of 225 is 15 so the answer to that is negative 15. When you're taking the square root of a fraction in number 3 you split it up so this becomes the square root of 49 over the square root of 4 and again we don't indicate whether or not we want plus or minus so we have to indicate both so it would be plus or minus 7 over 2. Okay, for number four, you have a decimal, which means a decimal is acceptable in your answer. Again, I didn't indicate whether I wanted the principal square root, so it's going to be plus or minus. And when you take the square root of 0 0.09, you get 0.3. Okay, moving on to number five. We're going to throw variables into the mix. To be a perfect square variable, the exponent has to be even. So these are perfect squares. This is going to be a perfect square because the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of a squared, you take the index, which is understood to be a 2. So we're going to take the exponent 2 and divide it by the index 2. So that gives you a to the first. We now need to tell, because it doesn't tell us what type of problem we could have, what kind of um, answer we could have for A. A could be positive or negative, so what's going to happen if it's positive? What's going to happen if it's negative? And that's where we use that rule from the first page that says, use absolute value um, symbols, not systems, symbols for variables only when you have this situation. You have an even root, an even power, and an odd result. So let's go back to problem number five and see if we have that. Here's the even root, because the root is a two. An even power, because the exponent of the problem is a two. And an odd result, because the exponent on the answer is odd. That's when you do use absolute value symbols and you only put it around the variable. So I'm going to put absolute value symbols around the A. Because I have the absolute value symbols around the A, that takes care of whether the value would be positive or negative, and we don't have to put the plus or minus. Notice these did not have a variable in it in 1 through 4, so we had to indicate the plus or minus. That is not the case when you do have a variable. All right, problem number 6. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of x to the fourth, remember you're going to take the exponent 
4, divide it by the index 2, and get x to the second. Since we have a variable, we need to decide whether it's going to need absolute value symbols. Remember the rule, even, even, odd requires absolute values. Okay, so it was an even root, it was an even power, but notice that the exponent on the answer is also even. It's not odd. Therefore, you do not need absolute value symbols. And here's why. If I substitute in a positive or a negative number, what happens in the answer? Notice it will always be positive because if I had a negative x, I square it and it'll be positive. If I had a positive number for x, I square it, it would still be positive. So no absolute value symbol is required in this situation. Okay, problem number seven. You'll notice that none of the problems one through six had these plus signs. We cannot take the square root of individual terms underneath a radical. It has to be factors, things being multiplied together. So what we need to do with this trinomial is factor it first. This is going to be x plus 2 times x plus 2. Factors of 4 that add to give you 4. Okay, so that's going to be 2 and 2. Well, we could really rewrite this as x plus 2 quantity squared because there are two of those same factors. Now when you take the square root of that, this is the whole term here, the x plus 2 raised to the second, you're going to divide the exponent by the index and you get x plus 2 to the first. That's all to the first power. So does it require an absolute value? Well, it was an even root of an even power and remember this was to the first power. So it's even, even, odd and it would require absolute value symbols. The grouping symbols on the inside are not necessary. That was just used because I wanted to show you um, that's to the first power.